Hey guys, it's Mr. Tomac back again with another episode of Chromeworks Prevents. This week we are going to be showing you a really cool game, um, an endless platformer uh, called Cat Climber. This all grew out of a conversation I had with Thane, one of my students from Florida, who um, wanted to do a game a little bit like Doodle Jump. And um, a after that, I talked to my son Jeffrey, who does a lot of my coding for me, and uh, we came up with a plan for a game that was constantly scrolling upwards and where you have the danger of falling back down again if something bad happened. And so that's what we've come up with is uh, something similar, but not, but we put our own spin on it. So you play as a cat and you're going to be jumping up and up and up higher and higher into the sky and as you um, climb you'll or as you jump you'll find bats along the way and when you when you land on the bats heads you get more upward momentum and you keep jumping higher and higher and higher there are other bats black bats that you hit that will make you fall downward and um, and so the object is just to get up as high as you can and um, to avoid hitting the ground for as long as you can uh, a little trickier than it might look as you'll discover when you start playing it so uh, it's a fun little game not too complicated I think most even fairly novice scratch players should be able, scratch coders should uh, be able to figure out what's going on here and follow along so um, go ahead and load up the starter file which you can find at chromeworks.ca slash lessons and you'll find um, all the graphics and uh, and other stuff there, as, uh, including documentation. I've got a PDF version of all the docs, plus links to the final file. If you just want to look at the completed file and have a look at that while we're doing the coding, that's fine. As usual, this isn't about building um, code as I teach, though you, you're welcome to do that if you want to. It's more of a watching what I'm doing and hearing my explanations and starting to understand the logic of putting together software. And that's what we're going to be teaching you um, today as we continue working on this. So um, let's jump right into it. All right, as you can see, we have our starter file up here. You can find it at chromeworks.ca slash lessons. This um, contains all the different bits and pieces that you're going to need to put this file together. We don't have a lot of custom stuff here today. We've got um, the basic default cat graphic which uh, you can see here, I've customized it a little bit. Let's have a look at it right now. So you can see that there's the default cat, which is just a normal one. I've also imported the cat flying graphic, which is a different sprite. I loaded it into the system using uh, the magnifying glass. I would choose a costume and just went and found a different cat costume. Um, there's a separate set that has him flying right here, as you can see. So I've added that there. I also modified one of the existing guys just by deleting his eyes and um, turning his mouth upside down to make him sad and kind of splaying his legs out around here to create the illusion that he's fallen and hurt himself. And um, so I'll be using that one as kind of a death animation when our character finally hits the ground. Um, okay, let's get coding here, guys. So um, I want to show you the rest of the graphics first. Here's the bat graphic. It is the default bat graphic. We picked the bat as an enemy. Well, not really an enemy. They're helping you here. Uh, we picked the bat here because he has all kinds of great graphics that make him look like he's flying, but also a costume to make it uh, to make him look different when he gets hit. We'll have him fold himself into a little ball here when he gets hit, and then he'll fall to the ground. And um, so this one seemed like an ideal candidate for what we were doing here. We have two background graphics that are going to be scrolling as well. We've got the sky graphic here, and it's just going to be scrolling over and over again. This is just an actual background graphic from scratch. I loaded it, copied it, and pasted it into here. We're doing this as a sprite because we wanted to keep scrolling constantly through the game. We can't move backgrounds around, of course, so anything that you want to scroll or move around on the screen, we normally want to um, put into a sprite rather than a background or um, that limits what you can do with it. Uh, we also have a background sprite here for the city which won't even appear at the beginning of the game or you might be able to see just the top tip of it and then as you go higher into the sky you won't see it anymore. So that represents the ground level that you're trying desperately to avoid hitting. 
Uh, and that's about it. The, we only have one sound effect in there right now, though we can add some more if you're interested in having a sound play every time you boink into a, um, uh, a bat or something along those lines. You can feel free to do that. Just um, This is your game in the end. We're just going to show you how to uh, make it, and you can customize it any way you want and save it to our remix room, um, which is available on Scratch. You can find the link to that on my website as well. And you can make changes to it. And if I like what you've done, I'll even show it on my live stream next week. All right, let's get started with the coding here. As usual, we're going to start with a green flag, which signals our project that we're getting ready to begin. Um, here we go. And we want our costume at the beginning to be the default costume, which is this one here. So we're just going to switch our costume right at the beginning of our game to default costume. We're going to go to the looks menu here and we're going to click on switch costume to cat flying. Here we go. Now we have to initialize some variables. Remember at the beginning of any game, um, the, the variables have to know what their starting position is. Otherwise, it'll just remember what the variable was the last time you played the game. So if you click uh, play a game like this and then click on the stop sign to stop your game, um, the next time you restart it again, your height, for example, will remain up in the air rather than starting you back at close to ground level. So everything has to be initialized at the beginning. I've already created some variables for you. They're just normal uh, variables. But uh, we have one here called height climb. We've got one called player height. Now, what's the difference between these? Uh, player height is your actual height on the screen. Height climbed will be the maximum height that you've reached as you're going up in the game. It's also rounded off. So we're going to see it up here at the top as we're bouncing around the screen. And um, so if you go down a little bit and come back up, this number is not going to change until you reach a new high height, basically. So this is kind of recording your maximum score in the game, which is the height that you've managed to achieve. OK, so let's uh, initialize those variables. We'll set our velocity, which is another variable, to 0. Then we're going to set player height to 0 or to 100. Sorry, we're a little bit off the ground here. And then we're going to set height climbed to 0. I think we could set that to 100 as well. But we're going to start it at 0, so you see at the beginning of the game that your score is 0. OK, we're going to put a forever loop, which is going to put us into a constant loop here where we're um, spinning through the air as we uh, search for bats to bounce off of. The only controls we're going to have in this game are going to be left and right controls. And we're going to um, institute um, uh, a, we're going to use WASD controls, meaning A and D are going to be the controls we can use to move left and right. But I'll also implement a um, second set of controls here that will let us use the arrow keys as well so that your players can use either option. There's really no need for any other control keys because almost everyone who plays games nowadays knows that those are the two options for moving things around. OK, so inside our forever here, we're going to start our character spinning. So let's go ahead and we'll go to our motion blocks and we'll grab this block here that says turn 15 degrees. Let's pop it into the hole here. Now, we don't want to turn a specific number. We want to turn faster the faster we're going up. And we're going to move faster every time that we bump into a, a bat that pushes us upwards. So um, we're going to want our spin rate to increase as we travel more quickly. So we're going to have to put some math in here. Instead of putting a number, let's go to our operators. And we'll glad grab a multiplication key, which is this little star here in the green blocks. There we go. So we're going to multiply our spin rate by the velocity. So let's go to our variables. We'll find a little bubble here that says velocity right here. And we're going to pop that into the first hole. Remember to uh, enter things into these little bubbles. You have to move them over until there's a little white fringe around the edge, and then you can let go. If you've got a big block that you're trying to cram in, remember you can only cram in um, blocks that are the right shape, that are oval like this. And you can see that as I move them over anything, mostly I'm moving it to where my mouse cursor is. Now be careful when you're placing stuff not to do this, because 
Now you can see the entire green block is in there. And if I pop it in there, it's going to push my multiplication sign out and replace it with velocity. We don't want to do that. We just want to put this in the left hand bubble. So we're going to do that. There we go. And we're going to um, multiply that by 2.5. And so now my character, who's pretty small, I've shrunk him down to 25%. Um, he should theoretically start spinning when we click the green flag. But as you can see, when I click it, nothing happens. That's because our velocity, which controls the rotation, is at zero right now. So let's um, just enter a number into the velocity just so we can see it spin around. I'm just going to temporarily change the set velocity to... 10, for example, and um, let's see what that looks net like now. So there we go. Now he's spinning through the air the way that we want him to. Now we're going to bleed off some of that speed as we fly. Jeffrey did a whole bunch of testing and he found that if you put a specific number in there as he's spinning around, because our bad guys are exactly spaced at certain heights on the screen, that um, if you control the spin in to, a, to the, the exact right number, you can make it so that he's always upright when he lands on top of the next bat in the row. Now this took a lot of playing around, so just trust me that this bleed off speed is uh, going to be a really important variable. So let's change a variable. We're going to go to change variable, which is here under our variable settings. The variable we're going to change is called velocity, of course, and we're going to change it by minus 0.22 and so as he spins he's going to slow down and eventually come to a stop uh, let's have a look at that so you can see he slows down and then eventually starts running uh, spinning backwards faster and faster and faster we're into negative numbers right now um, that will not happen later on in the game let's try that one more time so you can see it slows down and then starts spinning in the other direction so that's the power of multiplication, guys. You can um, you can make things appear to happen on a bit of a curve rather than steadily slowing down. It gets slowed down more and more, and then speeds up more and more as well. Beautiful. Okay. Um, now we're gonna um, actually we're gonna want to set this guy to to be in the middle of the screen, meaning. Um, that because it's an endlessly scrolling platformer, we're going to be jumping up, but our character is always going to stay fixed to the middle of the screen until he dies anyway. Um, and it's the background that's going to move around to create the illusion that our character is moving. So right at the top of the game, let's insert a uh, go to X coordinates and Y coordinates, this, this block here. And we'll put it right at the top, I think. And we'll call it uh, we'll say go to zero, zero, which is the exact middle of the screen. Now you can see that he's now spinning in the middle of the screen. And that's all beautiful. Okay, let's get our left-right movement working now. So I'm going to add an if statement. Let's go to our control blocks, and we're going to add an if statement. Remember, the if statement is like an optional statement that only happens if what's inside this box here is true. We're going to put something here in a second. So the statement in here is going to happen only when something is true. And if it's not true, it's going to ignore it and go to the next one. So what we're looking for here is a keyboard input. We're going to tell it if we're hitting the letter A or the left hand arrow key that we're going to move to the left. If we're not hitting it, it's not going to move to the left. It'll just ignore that statement. Okay, we need to put an or because we need two things in here. So I'm going to go to my operators, the green blocks. And we'll find this little block here called OR. Let's pop it into the hole. And now we need keyboard inputs. Now we get those kind of external inputs, things that are happening from outside the game that we're putting in. The thing we're putting in is our, is our own fingers, right? We're telling it what we want to do. So we're adding this interactivity with our senses. We need the game to sense whether something's been touched. So I'm going to grab this block here that says key space pressed. As most of you guys know already, if you hit the little triangle right here beside it, you get a little menu that lets you pick letters of the alphabet or arrow keys for your input. So I'm going to say A here. I'm going to add a second one beside it here that says left arrow key. There we go. Now, if 
So if I want to move left, now we're of course going to move left. So uh, our left right movement is our x coordinates. So I'm going to just change my x coordinate here. I'm going to change x by minus 8. And that's the speed that we've decided is a speed of 8 here. Now you could theoretically use a move command here, but uh, the problem with doing that is that move is going to move us in the direction that we're pointed. And since our character is spinning, we're going to end up flying in all kinds of crazy directions if we use a move command here. There are times when move is useful. Anytime you're uh, moving a character around and trying to um, navigate them across the screen, you'll want to use a move command, which basically means move in the direction I'm facing. But if you just want him to always go to the left when something happens, or always go to the right, you're going to need to change his x coordinate. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for the right hand key. I'm going to save a little bit of time by duplicating the if statement here. So I'm going to move my mouse over the word if, and then I'm going to right click. Chromebook users, you don't have a right clicker on your controller unless you have an external mouse. So if you're using the keypad, remember put two fingers down on the keypad, a little bit like a peace sign. And while you're pointing at the if statement. And when you do, this little menu will appear that will let you choose what to do. And I'm gonna to suggest to duplicate here. There we go. Now my cursor is holding on to this entire if statement, a copy of it. Basically the if statement and everything that's contained inside it has been copied now. And now before I click, I wanna move it down to the right place. I'm gonna move it directly below the first one right here. Good. And so now, um, they're right on top of each other. Be careful not to accidentally input it into the other uh, spot here. I'm gonna demagnify here so you can see a little bit better. So if these two if statements are not directly on top of each other, you place this wrong. So be very careful about that. I'm gonna pop it in underneath the other if statement. There we go. And now we need to change some of the information. Can you guys guess what we're gonna do here? We're gonna say if key, do you know? Okay, here we go, D is pressed or if the right arrow key is pressed we don't want to change our x by minus 8 here because we're moving to the right so we have to change it to positive 8 there we go so let's have a look at our game now again well you can see let's click the green flag you can see that we're spinning and let's not pay attention to the spinning right now I'm just gonna try and hit the right and left arrow key here and you can see that we're pretty smoothly moving left and right on the on the board and at some point we'll have bats on here that we can bounce off of and that will work beautifully. Okay, let's keep going here. Well, actually, I think that is all we need to do right now. The rest, there is some more code that's gonna go in this block right now, but it all has to do with what happens if we die. And we're not gonna do that until a little bit later when we get back to the bat. Um, so let's get our scrolling background working now and we'll see if uh, we can make the game a little more visually interesting. All right, so we're ready to start coding our city background. As I said, this is a scrolling game. Um, the sky and the city are both going to be scrolling, but in different ways. The city is going to be pinned to the bottom of the board, basically. As we go up, it will disappear and it won't be visible anymore. The sky, on the other hand, though, is going to be constantly visible. And so we're going to have to do some tricks to make it constantly refresh itself across the screen so that it creates the illusion that we're moving um, as we move across the sky here. That's a little bit complicated, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that in a second. But the, sky, the city is a little more straightforward, so let's start coding that. All right, so we're going to grab another green flag here to signal that we're at the start of the game and it's going to want to know what to do when we start. First thing we want is our uh, sky is going to, sorry, our city is going to be in front of the sky but behind all the characters in the game. So how do we set it up that way? Scratch has some layering commands, which you'll find under the looks menu here, right towards the bottom. There's one block here. Let me show you the two blocks that are important here. There's one called go forward one layer. You can change that to say go backward one layer as well. And then we can say go to front or go to back. 
we don't always know which layer we're at, but we do know uh, because there's, there's a different number of enemies on the screen at any given time. So we can't say go to layer 22 or something because we're not always going to be at layer 22, but we do know where things are in relation to each other. We know that the sky is going to be the very farthest towards the back of all our sprites. We know that our city is going to be the next one forward. So we're going to tell it when we click the green flag here, to, we're going to tell our city to go to the back and then go forward one layer. And now we'll know that it'll be in front of the sky and behind everything else in the game. Okay, now we just need a forever in here. I'm going to click on my control blocks here and grab a forever, which will get us doing the same thing over and over again. And all we're going to do here is keep sending the city back to a new XY coordinate. So let's go to our motion blocks. We're going to grab a go to xy command and plop it in there. Now our x coordinate isn't going to change because we're only scrolling up. So our x can stay at zero. Our y, we're going to have to cal calculate what that is based on how high the player is. So we're basically going to tell it to go to a spot that's, um, that's um, below the height of the player by at least... 190. Now the screen is only, um, it, its Y coordinate is only going down to 180. So once it gets down to 190, it will be off screen and it will stay there. So once we reach a, a height where the, um, where the city goes, um, gets off screen, it'll stay off screen as long as our height stays greater than zero, basically. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to click on here and so I need to do some math here. I need to say minus 190, which is below the bottom of the screen. It's right about here, I would imagine, just about 10 pixels off the bottom of the screen. So as soon as it arrives here, so we're gonna take that as its starting position, that's its zero point, and then we're gonna subtract the height of the player from it. So let's grab some math here. I'm gonna go to my operators. I'm going to grab a minus sign, which you'll find right here with our other math symbols. And I'm going to type in minus 190, which is the position off the screen where he's going to be. Let's just put that number in for now, just so I can show you what that looks like. So minus 190. When I click the green flag, you'll see that my city will go down as slow as it can on the screen. Eh? Um, that doesn't go completely off the screen though. Uh, I think as we're playing the game though, it'll disappear completely. Uh, so let's, we're, we're still gonna put this math in here, minus my 190 minus the height of the player. So let's grab the variable that's called uh, player height and we'll pop it in there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and give that a test now. Um, our initial height, you might recall that inside our cat, we set our player height to 100. We're starting in the air. We're not jumping off the ground. We're going to start by flying in the air from the beginning. And as soon as we touch the ground, the game will be over. So um, we're going to set our initial height to 100, as we already have. And um, the height of the city at the beginning is going to be minus 190 minus a negative one or minus 100 sorry so the math here is a little tricky you're going to get it to negatives minus negatives um in probably grade seven i would imagine so let me just show you what that is if i just if i just pull this out of here and click on the minus sign it will actually do the math for you and tell you what that number is so the the final answer minus 190 minus 100 so we're moving farther uh, down, making the number lower, right? So that number is minus 290. So um, the initial height is gonna be as far off the screen as our city can get. Um, so let's have a look at it. I don't think it's gonna disappear though. It will just see the tiniest tip of the roofs over us. So let's click the green flag and see what that, what that looks like. And you can see that as our player height changes, that's going to modify itself. Let's go to my variables here. Um, we're not going to code this. I just want to show you what it looks like. So let's go set and we'll say player height. And let's experiment with some different 
um, heights here and see what uh, this looks like. So our script is still running. You can see it's highlighted in yellow, which means that this particular block of code is still activated. We're still spinning like a daemon here at the top. So when I enter a different number here, let's say I set the player height to zero. You can see our, our city's gonna get up a little bit higher. When I add a higher, a lower number, like minus 100, the city will go up even higher. If I add a positive number here, assuming we're going up in the air, let's say I'm up to 200 now. And now you can see that, that now that I've gotten up to 200, the city has completely disappeared from the screen. Don't worry about the sky that's a little bit messed up right now. We're gonna be fixing that a little bit later. So um, I'm gonna trash this. We were already setting our player height to 100. So that's where this, you're gonna see just enough of the city skyline on the screen to know that there's something to fall to. You'll start falling as soon as the game starts as well. Um, but that hasn't been implemented yet. So you can see that nothing's really moving yet. So let's um, hit the stop key here. So uh, 190 minus player height, beautiful. Okay, so believe it or not, that's all we have to do for the city. Now let's go ahead and move to the sky and we'll get that scrolling as well. Um, it's all gonna magically start working in a second, trust me, we're just getting stuff set up. And then at some point when we click the green flag, you'll see all this stuff start scrolling and moving. Let's go back to our sky now. And you can see it's blank, so let's start coding that. We're gonna start with, you guessed it, a green flag. Let's zoom that up here for you guys so there's no squinting at home. All right, so as I said, we want this sky to be the very back of the game. So we'll go to our looks command here. We'll go towards the bottom and grab this go to front layer and we'll change it to go to back layer. There we go. And the first thing we're gonna do is make a copy or a clone of ourselves. In order for this overlap to work properly, sorry, in order for the sky to actually scroll, we need two skies on the screen at any given time. Because you can see that as the sky moves down below here, it's gonna leave blank stuff above it. We've got blank stuff below it here. So in order to fill up the entire screen, we're not allowed to draw an object in scratch. It's actually two screens high which would be the perfect solution here. So as we scroll down, we need a second one to come down off the top to fill the gap so that, uh, so that there's always a completely sky-filled um, background. Otherwise, the sky would do this kind of thing and keep scrolling like that. We want another block to be covering up those white parts so that they do, uh, continue, so that the sky is continuous and we don't have to worry about um, this fake look that comes when uh, when you get a white background there on the screen. Okay, so we need a, um, sorry, so we're gonna create a clone of ourselves. We're gonna make a second copy. That's under our control blocks. We're gonna go create a clone of myself. And then we need a forever to tell our original block what to do. So both these guys are gonna be moving. We're gonna program our sky to move and we're gonna create it, we're gonna create a clone and have it move in very much the same way as well, just to offset from the first one. All right, so let's add a go to block. We'll go to our motion blocks. We'll grab another go to X, Y. Again, nothing's moving to the left, so our X can be zero. Now our Y, just like in the city, our Y is, is gonna be something minus something. So let's go back to our operators. We'll grab a minus sign and we'll pl put the player height um, here. Now we're gonna change this in a minute, but for the moment, we're just gonna put player height here and you're gonna recognize this from before, zero minus player height. So that looks the same as our city here, right? 190 minus player height. This one's at zero minus player height, which means it's starting position is gonna be in the middle of the screen, just like that, basically. Um, actually, because we're at 100, it'll probably be a little bit offset from that. Let's click the green flag and see what happens. Oh, that actually does put it in the middle of the screen. Uh, I'm a little confused here. Okay. Oh, oh, the reason is because we've created a clone and now I've moved the clone and of course it's in a different spot. Okay, anyway, let's not worry about where the sky is for now. Now, as our height goes up, we want uh, when it goes off the screen to restart it back at the beginning of the screen. Now the simple way to code that would be to say, if 
uh, player height is greater than 360, then go back to the bot, which is uh, the entire height of the screen, then go back to the beginning again, which means that we need another if statement that said we'd have to do some math here and say two times 360, and then three times 360, four times 360. So really we're telling, we wanna tell our software every time that the player height changes by 360, reset yourself. Now there's a really cool function, we've used it a couple of times in some earlier games here called mod, and we're gonna add that right now. And what mod does, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about the math behind this some other time, um, but mod basically um, tells uh, a number as it's changing to reset itself back to zero again once it gets to the, to the maximum number. So we're gonna set a mod of 360 here, which means so we're gonna mod our player height by 360, which means as soon as the player height gets above 360, it'll go back down to zero again and then start counting up as we go up. And then when it gets to, to 720, it'll again go back down to zero. And then when it gets to 1140, I think, the next number up, it'll go back down to zero. And the same thing will happen in the reverse as we're falling down. So I'm gonna grab this mod block. We can find it under our operators. And right, it's the third from the bottom here. It says blank mod blank. So the variable that we're gonna mod is the player height. Let's pop that in here. And so to use this mod, even if you don't understand how the math works here, the thing to know is the number, uh, the variable that we're trying to modify goes on the left. And the number at the right here is the maximum number that that number is going to be before it goes back down to zero again. So if any kind of variable that you that goes up continuously, like in a scrolling background, and you want to use it over and over again, you can um, you can add this mod function to it, and that will change everything around so that it resets itself. All right, we're going to add one more little graphical touch here before we uh, start programming the clone, and this is going to happen in both of our objects, the original one and the clone. As we go up in the sky, I want the sky to darken a little bit so um, that we can tell how high we've gone. It'll be a little bit of visual feedback to tell your players um, that they've gone higher. Just another little cool feature that we want to add just to make the game look a little more sophisticated. So we're going to do that with our graphic settings. Let's go to our looks uh, menu here. And we're going to grab one of these blocks here that says set color effect to a number, right? Um, but we don't actually want to change the color effect, uh, setting the color effect to a number. I'm actually going to grab this block here. We're not going to use this one. I just want to show you how these blocks work. And I'm going to grab another block here called clear graphic effects. It'll reset everything. Just to demo what I'm trying to do here. Um, so if I were to change the color effect here, you can see that every time I change it by a certain amount, the color of the object changes. Then when I go to clear graphic effects, it goes back to its default again. Now we can change other attributes of this. We can change the fisheye effect. Uh, let me change my fisheye here. And you can see that it creates this kind of swirly thing. That's kind of cool. Um, we also have a whirl effect. Let me clear my effects here. There's a whirl that kind of spins everything around. These are fun effects that you can use in a lot of different ways. And uh, I'd love to see you guys experiment with this a little bit. Uh, let's clear the graphic effects. There's some other ones here that I'll let you explore. The one we're using today is called brightness. And so if we make this number go up, you can see it very quickly gets bright. But we can put a negative number in there as well. Let's put a smaller number like negative five in here. And you can see that as we get, as every time we click it, it gets a little bit darker until eventually it gets black. Now that's gonna be really scary. All right, so we're gonna grab this. Uh, we don't wanna change the brightness. We're actually gonna set it to a permanent effect because we're gonna use some math to figure out where it is. So we don't wanna change it relative to where it is. We just wanna tell it, go uh, set the brightness to something that's equivalent to what our um, math is telling us to be. So let's uh, change this one called set fisheye. I'm just gonna change it back to set brightness. We'll pop it in there. So we want it to be affected by our height, which means that we're gonna have to set it to player height. The problem with that though, so let's go to our variables. We'll grab an object here that says player height. There we go, this little bubble. Um, the problem with setting it to player 
height at the beginning, you'll see that it will be way too bright, right? We need it to be um, a smaller number. If we want this to get darker, we need it to be a negative number. Um, we also are, um, it's gonna change way too quickly. Okay, let's, um, we're gonna, yeah, okay. I, I think that we, um, for now, I'm gonna set it to just be modified by player height and we'll turn that into a negative number. We're gonna just go back and change this later um, because, because the problem is the way that this is set right now, it's gonna change way too quickly. But um, I just want it to be really obvious right now and then later on we'll do some math to uh, change it a little bit more to make the effect go a little more slowly. But, it, but at first we'll make it dramatic so you'll see the difference right away. So let's go to our operators and we're gonna divide that by negative one. So I'm gonna put player height inside the left bubble here, then grab this by the middle and pop it back in here. So dividing and let's pop it back in underneath the go to block. So dividing it by a negative number will just yield a negative number. That means that our player, that our brightness will be a negative number, meaning that the higher we get, the darker it will get. All right, let's click the green flag here. I don't think much is gonna happen yet. You can see that it's quite black now though and that's what we were looking for all right um we're going to be changing this in a little bit okay so um actually we should change it right now let's change it to minus 100 because we don't actually want it to be black there we go so now you can see that's very little change so we're at 100 so our player height is 100 right now divided by minus 100 will basically yield minus one. So our original brightness is gonna be minus one, which is as close to zero as we need it to be. And then the higher we get, the darker it's gonna get. So let me um, show you what that looks like. Let's go, just to simulate it for you, I'm gonna go change height, change player height by, let's say 10 at a time here. And you can see that as our height gets higher, our sky is moving and it's getting darker at the same time too. Now the clone's not moving yet. So you can see that it's not quite looking the way we want it to be. And so once the second one starts going, you can see that once it's set up properly, oh, where'd that second one go? That it will fill the entire screen up and it'll look like one continuous sky basically. Okay, so while we're at it, let's go and um, and program that clone now. So we have two copies of the sky. We went ahead and made one copy of it here. We've got the original and we've got the duplicate. So the duplicate is controlled by a block called when I started the clone. And uh, we basically wanted to do the same thing as, as the main one. There's very few changes we have to do here. So let's just duplicate the contents of this forever. Actually, we're gonna duplicate the forever loop here. So I'm gonna right click on it, duplicate, drag it underneath here. Now, the only thing we have to change here is, um, is we have to offset this. So we have to take the height that we set here and subtract 360 for it, from it so that it's down, so it starts at the bottom of the screen and then immediately moves up to the top and it will always be offset from the um, offset exactly 360 away from the other one. So it'll be on top of the other one in such a way that you won't even know that there's two of these. It'll just look like one continuous background. So let's go ahead and subtract 360, which is the height of our screen from our current position, which will offset us. So I'm gonna go to my operators, the green math blocks, and I'll grab a minus sign right here. Now, I want um, everything, um, sorry, I want the entire mod statement, but not the first zero to be inside here. So I'm gonna grab it by the word mod and pop that into the left bubble. And I can go ahead and place that back into this blank right-hand bubble here. So this is what this should look like right now. Um, be really careful. This is all has to do with bed mass, with order of operations, which I'm sure you guys have covered in math. So if you do the wrong thing in the wrong order, um, this is not gonna work properly. So the idea is that our player height is being modded 
first, then we subtract 360 from it, uh, then we subtract it from zero, and in the end that'll get us back to the proper number. I'm sure there's a few other combinations that will work, but, um, but because we've got some multiplication happening here with the mod, we have to be very, very careful about um, keeping the order correct. Okay, so I'm going to go minus 360. And I think we can test this game out now. Let's give it a try. I'll click the green flag. And you can see that my entire screen is full here uh, because we've got the two overlap overlapping blocks. Let me try moving one of them out of the way and you can see what's happening here. So we've got the top block and the bottom block here both um because our x uh, sorry because our height is 100 this uh these guys are offset a little bit so this guy is a 100 up and this guy is 100 over as well from where he should be so we can see how this is going to work by changing our player height variable now i've got a little change player height block here and when i click it you can see that our sky our sky start to scroll downwards and just keeps going continuously. It never repeats itself, or it repeats itself constantly, I guess. But the point is that ne you never see that white behind it because the two guys are working in conjunction to fill up the whole screen all the time in a way that pretty much looks invisible to you guys. Okay, so, so far so good. Next thing we need to do is get things actually moving and that's what, what we'll get right to. Okay, so our scrolling is working properly right now, but we really can't see it in action until we get our cat moving. So the next thing we're gonna do is get some vertical speed going for our cat here. Um, as you probably understand already, our cat only has the ability to move to the left and to the right. Otherwise, he doesn't have any ability to gain height. So he's gonna gain height by bouncing off of bats. What we're going to do right now is go back to the cat. We're going to create a little function that makes our cat go up um, every time that he bumps into a bat. So let's go back to our cat. And we're going to tell our cat to do that when he receives a message. It's going to be the bats deciding whether they've collided with our cat or not. I've just stopped my program here. Um, so, but we... But when that happens, the cat is the one that has to respond. So our code for this is in two different places. And as is usually the case when we have something happening in one sprite that has to affect what happens in another sprite, we have to use message commands to do that. So let's go down to our control blocks and we'll grab a um, message block. Oh, sorry, the message blocks are in the event blocks. I always get confused about that. Here's my events. Um, let's go, when I receive a message, the message is gonna be called cat bounce triggered. So let's go ahead and go new message and I will type this out cat bounce triggered and our code here will know to activate every time we touch a cat we'll do that in a little bit probably in part two actually um, now uh, so when we trigger a bounce the first thing we want to do is change our velocity we're going to be moving upwards by at a speed of 12. So let's go ahead and go to our variables and we will set the variable called uh, velocity to 12. All right, we're also gonna have our cat wear his flying costume for a couple of seconds here. So we're gonna tell him to change from there to there so that it looks like he's kind of flying up in the air. He's gonna be spinning, so it's gonna be a little bit hard to see, but you get the idea. We want it to look a little bit acrobatic as he's flying around here. Let's go to our looks commands here. We'll switch costume to cat flying B, which is the name of the costume we loaded up here. We wanna make sure that he starts off going upright. So even if our math isn't right and he hits the bat and he's at a little bit of an angle, we're gonna start him off going upright. And then from there, he's gonna start spinning again. So we'll go point in direction, not 90, but, oh yeah, 90, which is the upright position. Characters in Scratch generally, or in most video games, are facing to the right by default. Um, and that's just a historical thing about the way that uh, the video games used to be made. They were originally mostly scrolling sideways. Um, all right, point in direction 90. We're gonna play a sound effect here. So I'm gonna go to my sounds menu here. I already have a sound here called Boeing. 
For those of you who don't know how to load a sound up, you can go to the sounds tab here and go down to the bottom where it says choose a sound, go to the magnifying glass. And from there, you can go searching through the various sound effects. You can preview them this way here, just like that. Um, or you can search for them. So I'm going to just search for Boeing and you can see how we can find it right away. You don't have to use the same sound effects as me, by the way. If you have something else creative or clever that you want to do, I would encourage you to just add your own sound effects, record your own, download them from a sounds website. It doesn't really matter. None of that will change the way your game works. It'll just change the cosmetics, what it looks and sounds like. Okay, start sound Boeing and then wait two seconds. So let's go to our control blocks. We want our character to be to be wearing that cat flying costume for two seconds, basically. Just long enough for you to see it and register that he's flying. And then we're going to switch him back to his default costume again. So let's go to our looks commands here and switch costume back to cat default. There we go. Uh, now, when we click the green flag, nothing's really going to be happening because we haven't collided with anything. But we can simulate what this is going to look like by clicking on this when I receive block. So let's go ahead and do Boing. that. Boing. And nothing's changing. Boing. All right, so I've just realized there's one block that I um, forgot to add in the main script that was very important to having us um, go up and down properly. So um, we're gonna go back to that and then we'll be able to test this cat bounce triggered block. So let's go over to our left um, the big block of code at the left of the cat here. And uh, right here where it says change velocity, right under there we're going to actually translate that velocity into actual changes in height. So we're going to grab a change variable block and put it right underneath the velocity. And we're going to change our player height by our velocity. So every time the software spins around and goes through this loop again, it will change our height depending on what our speed is. And that's what will actually get us moving here. So I think as soon as we click the green flag here, we'll see something interesting start to happen. Let's go ahead and click. Yeah, there we go. And you can see that when we start jumping up and then our velocity takes us down and then we go, whoa, way, way down. And you can actually see that the, that the sky is getting whiter here as we go underground because it's not getting darker anymore. It's our, it, so the brightness is back into positive numbers. You're not going to see this happen in the actual game, but you get the idea anyway. So we're going to plunge. And that, at the point where we hit the ground here, everything's going to come to a stop eventually. And that's how our game will end. But our uh, graphics are working quite nicely here. Let's try it in the other direction now. So whenever I click on this, when I receive block, we're going to simulate me bumping into a, um, a bat and that will make us go up. So let's go ahead and click the green flag. And when I Boing. click on this, you can see Boing. every time I do it, I get a little bump Boing. to my height. Boing. 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 And our height is bleeding off fast enough that we really don't, we only go up a couple of stripes on this background. But you can see as we get higher, our background is getting darker until eventually I think it will just basically turn pretty much black. And then when we miss a bat, we're going to start falling down and then the background will get brighter and brighter and brighter. Here we go, we're falling faster and faster. You see our spin rate is increasing. And then eventually, whack, we hit the ground and we die. Which we will do in part two, once we get our bats running. So um, that's it for part one, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. And um, I will be uh, releasing part two of this lesson pretty much right away. So just go to my YouTube channel, Chromeworks. Uh, Chromeworks Tech Training on YouTube or go to my website, chromeworks.ca. And from there, you will be able to find um, part two of this lesson and uh, keep learning with me. In the meantime, thanks a lot, guys. That was a lot, This was a lot of fun and uh, happy gaming.